Hello friends, welcome back to the shop. Today is Sunday, January 14th, and it is a cold wintry day here in southeastern Pennsylvania. It was 18 degrees this morning, 18 Fahrenheit, in the 30s now. Um, gonna get rain and snow today, just gonna be a nice January day. Rained all day yesterday, cold. I kind of wish it would just be snow. You know, the, the, there's something about the cold and the rain that's <clears throat> much harder to uh, to deal with. I don't, I don't like the cold dampness, but we're going to get rain and snow today. And then apparently Monday into Tuesday, there's going to be more just snow. So we'll see what happens. Should be should be fun. Anyway, today I'm going to be uh, smoking a tobacco that was sent to me by my buddy Phil Rivera. A very generous of him to do this. Uh, he sent me a sample of Condor Long Cut. And if you watch the Friday Night live stream, I, I had this on Friday night and uh, was pl very pleasantly surprised by it. So we'll be going to, into a bit more detail on that. I don't have a lot more to chat about today, to be honest. So this is just going to be tobacco impressions and whatever else happens to pass through this uh, old head of mine. So, start off with the tobacco. Phil sent a sample in a in a little baggie here, and uh, again, I, I really appreciate this because this stuff is precious. It's in, almost impossible to get here in the U.S. unless you have a, a U.K. connection, and I know it's one of Phil's favorites, so got the tape stuck. That's my fault, not Phil's, because I retaped it funny last night, or Friday night. Um, yeah, unless you got a UK connection, you cannot get this. So this is a great opportunity. And he sent me this in, in part to help me get over my Lakeland horror <laughs> that was part of the Friday Night Livestream Tobacco of the Week experience uh, towards the end of last year. We hit a couple of Lakelands and they were unsmokable in my opinion. And I never would have tried this, but Phil kept saying, you got to try it, you got to try it, it's, it's good stuff. And uh, yeah, that's where we're at. So it is a beautiful flake tobacco, very nice uh, little flakes. And I'm going to rub that out. This, is the, this does not seem to be especially wet. Maybe that's because I've kept it in the baggie, but it smoked beautifully on Friday uh, after just rubbing out. Normally I would just kind of fold and squeeze this and ball it up and then stuff it in, but I don't want it to give me trouble, so I'm going to rub it out. And this will just take a moment. So the tobacco is, at, first off, the, the pouch note, baggy note, whatever you want to call it, it's definitely floral. It's not the same kind of floral as the other Lakelands that I tried. It's not that sort of... Uh, perfumey floral. This is this is a sweet floral scent. And the tobacco is supposed to be uh, primarily Virginia. Virginia's are all Virginia. And it has a topping which is a proprietary topping that's described as a liquor based topping. And one of the interesting things about this is that the topping is apparently, the thing I read on tobacco reviews was said that it was boiled in I, I might be steamed in, possibly a process very similar to what Cornell and Deal uses with autumn evening. Uh, the nice thing about that is it gives you that topping throughout the bowl. It doesn't just flash off when you first light it. And uh, we'll talk more about the topping as I get into it. So you can see I've got the tobacco just kind of roughly rubbed out here uh, in my uh, Hillbilly Piper gift bowl, uh, tobacco rubbing out bowl. <laughs> Thank you, Donnie. And I'm going to be loading this into a Phil Rivera. And uh, boy, this is a this is one of my favorite pipes. Uh, believe it or not, this is one of Phil's seconds. I have not done a full commission from Phil, and I'm I'm going to do that this year, as soon as the holiday dust settles and I figure out my finances for the year. I'm going to be in touch with Phil. But it's hard to believe that this is one of his seconds. It speaks to the quality of the work Phil does. All right, so we'll get this loaded. Uh, I want to get all the little little fine bits on top, partly because I'm viewing this as a precious sample of tobacco, but mostly because that's what helps you get it lit. Kindling. 
All right, so that flake uh, perfectly filled this bowl. And this is a relatively small bowl of pipe, but um, it's perfect for this kind of thing. Uh, all right, so we'll get this lit up and we'll talk more about it. So the first light is unmistakably floral. Uh, you clearly know that this is a topped blend that's got something flowery in it. But it very quickly, I mean, while I was still lighting it, that very quickly is uh, combined with a really nice deep Virginia uh, flavor uh, not not tart not not citrusy but but just deep mellow Virginia and they combine really well Give me the second light Now the, the floral topping on this, or the, the liquor base topping, um, just to keep things copacetic with the reviews, it's not even in the same category as some of the uh, Galleth blends that I, was, that I was trying at the end of last year. This is, yes it's floral, but it's not that perfumey after shavy kind of floral. It's much more reminiscent of the kind of floral notes I get off of something like uh, Samoy or uh, even Rustica has some of those notes in it. Um, and, and, and Deer Tongue to some extent, although it's not as, not as bright as Deer Tongue. And it's not heavy. It's just enough so that it's there and it allows the Virginia to come through. Oh, kick the camera, sorry. <laughs> allows the Virginia to come through really nicely. And the balance in this blend is amazing. It is smooth, mellow, um, it reminds me of, uh, and, and, and I'm not saying that the flavor comparison is, is similar, it, it's completely different in terms of flavor, but in terms of the quality of the smoke and, and sort of the smooth mellowness, I've got some 10 plus year old um, luxury bullseye flake that is just an amazing experience to smoke because it is just so so smooth um, and and this is like that this has got that uh, velvety sorry that's the only word that comes to mind velvety texture to the smoke Now, this is not an everyday smoke for me. It, um, it's a special occasion smoke. It's, well, maybe, maybe not special occasion, but two or three times a month, something like that. If I had it, you know, in, in quantity, since I've only got about three flakes of this left, it's a special occasion smoke. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, it's just really, really surprisingly nice. And I say surprisingly because I was so afraid of it. You know?
So Phil sent me two other tobaccos, um, Boson Plug and, um, oh gosh, I should have stopped at two other tobaccos, but now I have to look it up. So Bos Boson Cut Plug and the other one is uh, Peter Heinrich Reserve Grand Cru number no. two. And he thinks I like all of them. He was dead on right with this. Uh, he's never led me wrong. And uh, I'm really looking forward to the other two. So we're going to do them in that order for the tobacco of the week for the next couple of weeks. So we're not going to be voting. We voted on this one. And uh, the Condor won by a mile. But next week we're going to do the Boson and then the Peter Heinrich. Uh, and then after that, we'll get back to sort of random tobaccos from my cellar. So, if you get a chance to try Condor Long Cut, try it. Um, if you have a friend in the UK, be nice to them. That is just wonderful. Uh, so, what else is going on here? Like I said at the beginning, I don't really have a topic for today. I'm just enjoying the tobacco and chatting. Uh, so, my wife uh, asked me earlier in the week uh, if I could make another spatula. A very dear friend of ours is moving away. Uh, moving from... Pennsylvania to Kentucky and my wife is kind of upset about this because it's somebody that she's close to and uh, you know she's she feels like she's losing a friend so she asked me if I would make them a spatula and uh, of course so I've now made more spatulas than I ever thought I would I've become quite good at it though in my humble opinion so this was the result of yesterday's labor. These things really are quite nice for cooking because they get into the edge of the pot really well. I like to use them um, in our instant pot. We make rice in that a lot. And it's just really great for getting in there and scooping out the rice. But it also can be used for, you know, eggs and things like that. It's got a thin enough edge there that you can get under stuff and flip it. It's a pretty versatile tool. So this is cherry. Um, I have to put one more coat of walnut oil on it, but it's it's pretty much what it's going to look like in the end. And you can see it's uh, it's got that scoop to it, uh, a little decorative banding there, and the end's got a little ball on it. I've gotten so I make this on the lathe from here to about here, and then. This part is all done by hand, although I'm using my my sanding uh, French wheels that I set up for pipe making. I'm going to get to pipe making. I really am. Uh, the neat thing about this is I've done so many of these that I've actually gotten better at using the French wheels. And this one, the, the first set that I made, so I pro this is probably like the tenth one of these that I've made. And all of the others required a couple of hours of hand sanding, filing, uh, things like that to get them into the final shape before I could oil them. Uh, I did this in one day. I, I it pretty much was ready to go off of the, the French wheels. I did sand it by hand just to get some scratches and stuff out, but the shaping was pretty good. And, and the surface was actually, I, I can go up to 400 grit on the French wheels and it could have I could have oiled it and, and passed it off at that point. Sorry, I gotta fix that camera thing. Anyway, uh, so I think it was probably really good practice for me in terms of using the French wheels. And uh, yeah, who knows? Maybe I'll make a pipe again. Just never ending. But it's a happy problem to have because I know that's gonna make someone happy. Um, 
this person cooks a lot and uh, she has roots here in Pennsylvania. That is local Pennsylvania cherry. So it's got a bit of a connection. Uh, yeah, hopefully she'll like it. I like doing that sort of thing. I like making things for other people that, that they're going to use and enjoy. Um, and that's one of the things that's drawn me to, to pipe making or even pipe restoration work, you know, knowing that my, my work is going to allow someone to enjoy something and, uh, you know, maybe they'll even think of me when they're smoking that pipe or cooking with that spatula or whatever. It's one of the things that drew me to Luthery, uh, which I love and I would love to do again, but it's incredibly time consuming and I just don't. If I, if I'm, if I wanted to do, do Luthery, it's all I could do. And I couldn't, couldn't have any of my other hobbies and it just, it wasn't tenable for me. So I've actually turned my back on that at this point. I, as, as I've been cleaning up the shop, there was a large, what's called a go board. If you don't know what it is, it doesn't matter, but it's a pretty big thing. And I, I disassembled that and decided I'm, I'm, not going to you know, repurpose some of the parts and stuff. It's uh, it's over. I'm not going to ever make another musical instrument, which is fine. You know, just phase in my life that's gone. Uh, fly rod building is another thing that I enjoyed doing because I could make a fly rod for someone and give it to them and they could use it and enjoy it and maybe think of me while they were fishing. And, you know, sometimes I hear back from somebody and say, oh, this rod is fantastic or gee, your rods stink. No, nobody ever said that, but... I don't want to make myself sound, sound like a master rod builder. I, I, I made some nice rods. People enjoyed them. But, uh, yeah, that's that's the kind of thing I, I really like. And I think it's what sort of drove me to, to start the pipe restoration business. Because you, you, know, you get these pipes that somebody's grandfather smoked, and they've been neglected for years and years, and they'd like to smoke it again. And you give that back to them. You, you restore some of the... The beauty of that pipe, you restore it to function and then they can smoke it and think about their grandfather and have that connection. That's a wonderful feeling. Problem is somebody sends you their grandfather's Dr. Graybull pipe and you have to put you know, 12 to 15 hours into getting that into a shape to give back to them. And what do you charge for that? They can get another Graybo pipe for what? I don't know what Graybos cost these days. I mean, last time I bought one, it was like twelve dollars, but they're probably more in the uh, forty to fifty dollar range. So it just economically it just doesn't work. And while I would love to do it just out of the goodness of my heart, and I still do, I I can't I can't do it for everybody. Not without charging something, and I don't know how to charge for that fairly. So, but if I can make a pipe, and I still don't know, you know, I've, I've made three, I like them, um, I need to make another eight billiards before I feel confident enough to make something that I would consider worthwhile, um, maybe. Maybe, and it just depends on how those eight billiards go, and then it depends on how that what, that next pipe looks and smokes. So I got a lot of work to do. But if I was to make pipes and, and sell them, I'd probably give a lot away first. But if I was to do that, it would be something I, I did as a hobby on my own time, in my own time, and for myself. And then I'd say, hey, does anybody want this? And if somebody did and they enjoyed it, that would mean a lot to me. You know, that, that to me is fulfillment from the hobby. Much more so than just making furniture for the house or, you know, that, that kind of stuff. It, it's nice, it's good to be able to do it, but being able to share the creativity, I think, is it's important to me.
So there, you got a topic that I didn't even think I was gonna gonna have. Thank you, Spatula. You saved my video. Well, folks, I am gonna go and continue to enjoy this. It's uh. It's just wonderful. And you'll notice I have not done a lot of relights on this. It burns really well. Uh, burns completely. The bowl that I had on Friday, there was no dottle at all. It was just, just ash that I knocked out. Uh, wonderful tobacco. So thank you, Phil. I uh, really appreciate it. I'm loving this, and, and, and I really appreciate the opportunity to try something that's so so rare. So with that, my friends, I'm going to get off to whatever the day holds. And I don't even have a guess as to what that is right now. So we shall see. So with that, I will draw this to a close. We'll be back on Friday night with another live stream. Uh, and we'll be smoking uh, Bosun Cut Plug. So something to look forward to there. So I hope you have a fantastic weekend. Uh, if you're in the U.S. and it's Martin Luther King Day on Monday. I hope you enjoy the uh, the day off if you have one. And uh, we'll see you next week. So until we speak again, I'll look forward to talking to you all again very soon. Goodbye now. <laughs>